You can wait for us if you're here. Praise the Lord. We have giants in the house today. Also, we have Oji National Hospital Abuja. Finally, we have Mrs. Grace Iyang, the sister of our celebrant today. Could you wave to celebrate her? Next on our program, we would preeminent because even the songs that are being sung are the Lord. Praise the Lord. Would like to somebody like to shout a big hallelujah tonight. We are celebrating your faithfulness. This is a night of celebration, and we have come here to celebrate your faithfulness, being expressed through your vessel. Father, we just thank you. Lord, as we exhort ourselves again this evening, we ask that, Father, you will take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, uh, this is not a preaching. This is not a church service. It's called exhortation. But early this morning, about 3 a.m., uh, there is a global uh, prayer uh, network that I participate with, is all over the world. We are pastors, and I had to take a slot. I had to pray for Australia and Lithuania by 4 a.m. this morning. So I woke up, and I was asking God, I remember that I have an assignment today, but I really don't know what to do. And the Lord dropped something in my spirit. He said, talk to them about Lithuania. You know, so this evening, I'm standing here just to talk to us about Lithuania. I won't be reading much of the scriptures. But God doesn't do things for novelty. Anything that God creates or has created, it is for a purpose. More importantly... Purpose that God has created us for, we should find fulfillment. And you don't find fulfillment in only acquiring what God has given to you or possessing them. I'm going to explain. Paul realized what I'm talking about, and he wrote a letter to the Colossians, to the brethren in Colossae. And in chapter 4 and verse 17, Paul made a statement there. He said, please tell Archippus to take heed of the ministry he received of the Lord. Do you remember? That he will do what? He will fulfill it. You see, fulfillment is a matter. Several of us, we are living and we are actually, uh, you know, we, we are packaged with so many gifts, but yet we live unfulfilled. And it's a water leaf. It's not good. Why I'm sharing this is because we are celebrating a woman tonight who, in my own very parochial way of thinking, I think she's living a fulfilled life. She's living a fulfilled life. You see, in Matthew chapter 25, if you read from verse 14 to 25, you will discover where Jesus Christ gave talents. Do you remember?
Remember, you give talents to so many people. And every human being that is born into this earth has a talent, at least one. But you can have many. People have talents. You know, you have talent to do one thing or the other. These are gifts. But when you are born again, when you experience a new birth, in addition to your talents, which I call endowments, you will now have what I call endowments. You will be endued with spiritual gifts. These are no longer natural gifts. They are spiritual gifts. That is what you find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you know, and you also find in Romans chapter 12. You now have endowments. So when you are a child of God, you do not only have endowments, you have what again? Endowments. But many of us are living short of these two things. There was a man, one of the persons that was given gifts in Matthew chapter 25. If you remember what he did, that's a natural man for you. A very clever man, a very clever man with natural intelligence. He went and wrapped it in a, ma in a pin and hid it in the ground. And when the master came back and said, what did you do with the gift I gave you? He said, I know you. You are a very austere man. Who likes to reap where he never sowed? This is what you gave me. Take it. Please, was the, did the master commend him? want to put her life in a specialization. We have had a short story told by her friend. She's a medical consultant, a medical doctor with excellent record, but yet, this is somebody that is finding expression in diverse ways. Listen to me because I soon leave you. The truth is that your task is first of all to discover what are those gifts whether natural or spiritual, that are in you. They are meant to bless God and bless humanity. They are not meant to be tied in a napkin and hidden in the ground, as many of us have tied our gifts. We are meant to bring out these gifts and use them to bless people on behalf of God. You see, so who we are celebrating this evening, my opinion about her, is that first of all, she is a wife of one husband. Hallelujah. And she is a mother of her children. She is an author. She has written several books. She's a medical doctor. She's a poet. She has written a lot of poems. I have read many of them. And this same person we are talking about is a musician. Oh, I thought you should clap for her. <laughs> Listen to me. I, I, I didn't come here to campaign for Dr. Mrs. Unje. But sincerely speaking, her life is tragic. Are you hearing me? Her life is very tragic. This woman is not just a musician, she's a dancer. No, I'm envying Dr. Dr. Ungie because she has a good record. And the same person I'm talking about is a spirit lifter. Dr. Ms. Ungie will lift your spirit. Why? Why is she? Why does she have this ability to multitask? Because she discovered that beyond medical science, there are these gifts in her. Are you hearing me now? And she's able to deploy them into usage. And that's why all of us are gathered here. We didn't gather here because we want to be tested for anything. But that's her primary assignment. Medicine. But we are gathered here because we want to celebrate God's goodness in 
several areas of her life. This is a woman that has the mind and the heart of a child. Not childish, but childlike. And sincerely, I discovered that this is a woman that is due to grow in her years by birth. When you are, when you have gifts, and those gifts you have, whether they are natural or spiritual, and they are not being deployed unto blessing men, let me be sincere with you. You are not living a godly life. A friend of mine said, I would not want to be one day be put in a box and then nailing the box called office. And I have not been able to give out all the truth that is in my life. It's not the way. Elisha was buried, was, was there. And they carried the dead body of Elisha. And the dead body of Elisha was able to resurrect another man. Why should your anointing, your gift, your gift in life be operative even in your death? Why not when you are alive? Because it means you did not exercise it. So as I, as I enjoy us today, I want you to think about it. You are born for a purpose. And you are born for good life. That you have something, probably money, or you have a talent, is not enough to possess it. It's not enough. You should be able to deploy it into you. You see, the Bible says, it says, let your light so shine. Do you remember? In Matthew, I think, chapter 5, verse 16. That men will see your good works. And do what now? Glorify the, our Father in heaven. But what many of us have done is that we have taken our napkin or something and covered our mouth. And then we specialize. We say, I am this, and I am this, and this is what I am born for. No, who told you? I came into the church, and when I see this woman sing, when I see her dance, and I, I, I see, they say she's a consultant. I say, how? She consult, our sister says it's a mis, 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 misopology. You know, I mean, even seeing her here, you can understand what I'm talking about. I read a small book. It's on the book of, it's on the Thessalonians. And the author called it the contagious Christianity. These were people that they repented on what I call a hit and run evangelistic uh, uh, outreach by Paul. Because there was a, a hostility that broke out, and Paul had to run to Berea. Do you remember? From Berea, I went to Athens. Timothy was in Corinth looking for him. Reading under six months that these guys taught the gospel, the testimony is profound elsewhere. Why? Because they fought out what they had to bear. The Bible says, we could see the work of your faith. Eh? We could see not the labor of your labor. Then we could see the patience of your hope. Three things that must be vital in every July for pastor. These were people that didn't sit under up to one year. He said, We could bear you witness that the after the, the, the that immediately we entered into you, he said, You you left your gods and you turned unto the true and living God. And you are serving him, and you are waiting for the coming of the Son of God. Please, can we arise from this occasion and don't just end up enjoying all the presentations? I'm enjoying the presentation. The, our sister Chikasa had almost converted me to join choir this evening. Honestly. And our brother uh, 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 lied. But I don't want to finish enjoying this. I am celebrating the faithfulness of God in the life of a person who has decided to diversify her life. Discover those gifts you have and deploy them to serve God through humanity. And then you will live a fulfilled life. Will you like to bow your head and pray?
I don't know what you had in a few minutes. Can you ask God to help you? That you will not die with your gifts unutilized. Why do you think that that thing you are doing, you are calling your profession? Who made you a professional? Why do you think that that's the only gift you have on earth? The person we are here for tonight is a medical doctor by profession and degree. But I just told you, beyond being a, prof a, 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 a professional medical doctor, she's somebody's wife, she's a mother, she's a musician, she's an author, she's a dancer, she's a poet, she's a spirit lifter. Thank you for this provocation. Our prayer, Lord, is that nobody who has heard these words will go away from this place and do not leave here. Lord, bring the rest thing about our lives. Let every talent they have be on the hand of God. There is a surrender day. The day when the fountain of talent will just be their center and away from them. Lord, we are praying tonight that we may not be found wanting. In Jesus' name. So CCC, which happens to be our alma mater, could you wave and celebrate them? Thank you very much. We also have Dr. Enema Amodu, NMA Chairman, FCT. Okay. I know he was here, probably he just stepped out. Then we have Mrs. Okodia, Patience, Assistant Director of Nursing National Hospital Abunista, anointed specially by God to bless the life of his people. Amen.
Father, by clapping those hands, come on with you. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Praise the Lord. Next on our list for tonight's event, we have the review of the special book written by our host, Dr. Ince Ondi. And um, we'll be having two persons come up to review the book that will be launched today. And first on my list here, I have Mrs. Enodia. Please, can you put your hands together for her as she comes to give a review of his book? Is she available? Okay, put your hands together for her. take it for granted. I, I feel very honored. And I want to thank the Lord for this, this very wonderful occasion. Praise the Lord. Okay, um, about the title. The title of book. The title is The ABC of Temptation. The ABC of Temptation. About the title. The title of book is highly illustrating. It is a step-by-step -step guide on how to deal with temptations. About the author, I know our dearest auntie has said a lot about her and our uncle, but I'm just going to do a little, you know, um, talk about her. The author, Dr. Mrs. Insel Bond Ondi, can best be described as an epitome of versatility. She could best be described as a reflection of Proverbs 22, verse 29, which reads, Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before consultant EMC surgeon, a wife, a mother, sister, and a mentor to a lot of people, including yours sincerely. <laughs> Who else is better equipped to write this book than our sister whom the Lord has graced with this burden of exposing the antics wicked schemes and imaginations of the enemy of our souls to. Her desire is that as people interact with this very book, they will be able to survive the wicked scheming of the devil through the power and mercies of God. John Ray. The book is a Christian literature as it deals with Christian themes and worldviews. Overview of the book. This book, the ABC of Temptation, is divided into five chapters, namely, a standing soldier of the Lord, the anatomy of temptation, broad way of temptation, cure for temptation, and a concluding chapter respectively. Essentially, the ABC in the book is an acronym for anatomy of temptation, broad way of temptation, and the cure for temptation. The book is important to every believer because it does not only expose the schemes of the devil, but proffers a way out to mitigating temptation when they come, for they surely will come. Praise the Lord. Chapter by chapter progression. The book in its intro introductory chapels and display the values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service is suggestive of a person who is active, carrying out his duty sin, for the presence of sin will cause him or her not to be standing. This chapter likens the Christian race to a journey that is achieved by the grace mercies of God as it encourages believers to strive to make it to the finish line, not by competition or comparison, but solely looking up to God, the author and the finisher of our faith. The anatomy of temptation as a chief consultant EMC surgeon. I think it was B.J. Nagler that says, we are a sum total of our experiences. Thus, the title gives a peek into the structure and our internal workings of temptation, its origin, the why, and how people fall into temptation. 
God's way of temptation. This chapter holds that temptation is a common factor to all humans. But how they are handled determines whether they are in the broad or narrow way. This is buttressed using the biblical examples of Samson, David, and Peter as cloud of witnesses who had gone ahead of the brethren in order that Christians can glean whatever lessons there are from their life experiences. From hindsight, Christians know that these men were not perfect men. They had their own fair share of mistakes, but they overcame through the mercy of God. Praise the Lord. This chapter prescribes a twofold cure for temptation. One prescription for the individual and the other for the church. The individual's prescription includes admitting that he or she missed it, repenting genuinely, forgiving oneself, addressing the weaknesses, going back to the first love, which is God, and striving to do good thereafter. The prescription for church includes rejoicing for the person, Correcting in love, emphasizing God's love and forgiveness, and receiving the person back. Then, of course, the concluding uh, chapter. The concluding chapter teaches that for the Christian to overcome, he or she must safeguard and preserve his or her salvation. Although it is the work of grace, it must not be taken for granted. In doing this, the Holy Spirit must be the best friend and guide in the lives of believers. They must submit themselves and their will to him and in total and be in total agreement with him. Closing thoughts. I want to end with four lines from Otto's poem titled Finishing Strong. Finishing Strong can be found on page 147 of this very book, A Beauty of Temptation. It reads, in every aspect of your walk with God, be sure to finish strong and faithful. His grace is sufficient. He's ever near. A very present help till the very end. Praise the Lord. I, encu I encourage everyone, therefore, to pick this compelling book, for in it is embedded many lessons for life application. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Mrs. Onoja. Could you celebrate her one more time? You know, scripture tells us that God will not allow us into any temptation that is beyond our strength. And I think books like this are very important and paramount in our day-to-day -day life. And I advise that everyone, before you leave, you get a copy. To do the second review, someone very special and dear to the heart of our host, please could you celebrate Mrs. Anago as she comes up to give her review. Praise the Lord. And good evening, or good afternoon, everybody. Um, Mrs. Sonoja has actually reviewed the book. Um, mine is very simple now. It's just to point out a few salient points. Um, I'll start with um, what this book is designed to do. It's designed to do two things. One is to help us avoid pitfalls of temptation. If you remember the story in the Bible about Elisha and the king of Syria, I don't know how many of us remember it, the thing that led the king of Syria to send soldiers to go and capture Elisha. You know what Elisha was doing? When king, uh, the king of Syria planned how he would attack Israel, Elisha would tell the king of Israel, don't pass this way or don't do like this because these people are waiting for you there. And he will go and check and true, true. That's what king, the king of Syria wanted to do. And that way, they never fell into the traps set for them by Syria. That's what this book wants to do for all of us. So what we are saying is we don't just want you to buy. We want you to read it so that you know how to avoid these pitfalls or traps. And then the second reason is for those who have fallen, how to just get up again. This book tries to let us know that the God with whom we are dealing is a forgiving father. Do you remember his dealings with Israel? In Psalm 107, he tells us the things that Israel would do, 
the idolatry and everything. And then he would be watching them. They get into trouble. And in their distress, they'll cry out to God. And what happens? He will deliver them. And remember, this God is omniscient. Do you remember? He knows everything. And he declares the end from the beginning. He knows that they will fall again. I don't know if you understand another one. And then they cry to him. So what this place is telling us is, have you fallen? Don't remain there. They say failure is not that you are failing. No, but it's when you fall, you remain there. So if you have fallen, brother, sister, don't remain there. We have a loving father, a very forgiving father, and he will receive you back. And this book tells us how people were received back. For example, the prodigal son. You remember what happened? When he was coming back, when he came to his senses, as he was coming back, what did the father do? If any of us here who has fallen, he's ready to run and embrace you. She. When I dancing, he went looking for him. He's always looking. Let's not hide anymore. Just, that's what our father is waiting to do for any of us who has fallen. These are the two things this book wants to do. And then the book tells us, you know, the cure or what to do, how to be purpose. You say God is a God of purpose. And do you know when we fall into temptation, that's what this book tells us, we frustrate God's purpose for our lives. And it is so painful to our father. So when you have fallen, don't remain there. Get up again so that you can fulfill purpose in the name of Jesus Christ. And then she, this book talks about how you'll be able to stand. It talks about nutrition. It tells us that it's a battle between two opposing camps, God and the devil, flesh and the spirit, and so on. And talks about nutrition. She gave an example. Say if you are malnourished, if a child or a soldier is malnourished, can that soldier do well in the battlefront? No. He will fall prey. Or an animal that is malnourished. When a predator sees it, that's the easiest one to catch, isn't it? And that is how it is with us. If we are malnourished, the enemy will just fall prey to the enemy. And there's something she said I found very interesting. Talking about feeding fat on the word of God. He said the enemy is crawling, looking for whom to catch and devour. Now, if you have fed fat, he looks at you and says, this one I can't handle. Too big for me, I can't swallow this one. And if he tries swallowing, what happens? He will choke. But if you are malnourished, you become an easy prey. You become very vulnerable and he goes for you. So this book encourages us a lot to read the word of God. And that is how we will be able to withstand the enemy. And another thing I find very interesting in this, um, in this book, there are so many things. Like um, the first person who reviewed said, when, when you read it, even if you, if you don't know anything in medicine, there are so many things about uh, medical terms I learned reading this book. And so if you are a doctor here and you people are, are hoarding your terms, she has made them available for us here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, please don't go after her. <laughs> and, and then please, um, as we said, that it is trying to show us how to avoid pitfalls. You know what happened to Elisha, how King, the, the king of Syria sent soldiers after him. We need to pray for her because the enemy is not happy about this book. You know, he has exposed a lot about him, and he wants to go for her. But he will not get her in the name of Jesus Christ. And then one other thing she said that is very, very important for us is, when you are, have fallen, don't conceal it. Don't make excuses for it. Anything you make excuses for, you are not ready to forsake. So please, just come to the open. You know, David, when he fell, he didn't make excuses. He admitted. But at the time he concealed it, do you know what happened? From one thing to the other. So let us conceal it. And finally, return to the Father. He is loving. He is waiting for you. God bless you. Come on, you can do better. Jam those hands for the Lord. God bless you very much. Mrs. Anago, that was really, really amazing. Um, once again, I want to thank everyone for coming out here to support our host, Dr. Inse. It's been amazing. And I know time is fast spent. We are very busy people. And you took out time from your schedule to be here. Um, we just have...
lead over 30 minutes left to be in this event tonight. And I hope you just exercise patience with us as we run through um, quickly the remaining um, parts of this program. You know, there's a saying that says, behind every successful man is a word? Woman. Now, behind every successful woman is a what? Because I've been trying to ask and answer that question myself, you know, for the few years I've been on the earth, and I'm, I'm yet to have an answer. You know, like the, the um, chairman that gave the admonition, he said, our host today is multi-talented, not just a consultant as a doctor. She's also a songwriter. She's an author. She's an inspirer. She motivates. And in addition to that, she has a family. And I would like to especially recognize her family. First, her dearly beloved husband. And I think the one that has made her successful, <laughs> Dr. Celsius Ondi, the chief medical director of Kelina Hospital. Sir, please could you wait for us? And she's blessed with four kids. And out of that four, we have two here. We have Ashi and Akon. Can you just wave to them? Kids, yeah, they are the product of her um, being a blessed mother also. Also, um, the ushers have um, sent around a little white paper. And um, there's a detachable part below, which is the pledge. You'll be pledging into this event, especially to the book launch and to the album launch. So as the Lord lays it in your hands, you can um, tear it out and make your pledge with your correct um, details, your name, your number. Please don't write a number that when we call, we'll be here. Okay, Imana, please. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you celebrate yourself once again? Come on. <laughs> Next on our list, we have, you know, to every event, we must have a chairman. And on that note, we would like to welcome our chairman to give his charge, Mr. Ifai Anago. Please, could you put your hands together for him? Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. I called uh, my daughter. Lucy, I call her my daughter, this afternoon. And I said to her, what is my role as a chairman? What am I supposed to be doing as a chairman? She said, nothing. <laughs> Every event ought to have a chairman. So you're just the chairman of the event. Praise the Lord. And uh, when I heard Brother Ike, Brother Ike Iguanyi you talk this afternoon, some words entered me. I began to ask myself, how do we generate the word chairman? Is it just a routine word? Or was there an origin to it? I found that in those days, if you come to a gathering, everybody else stands. The only person sitting down is the guy in charge. So they call him Chair Man. <laughs> so when you come in, you do not require any prophet to tell you who is in charge. The guy on the seat there, sitting down, but that's every other person standing. That is a person in charge. He's a Chair Man. Don't worry about today the nomenclature. But we now call chairperson or chair lady because of the times we're in. My challenge this afternoon is that just like Brother Ike said, everybody born into this world has a purpose, has a talent. Some have two, some have five. And everybody, whether you are multi talented or mono talented, a day is coming when everybody must give account of multi-talent and mono-talent. And you cannot say, sir, I cannot. Or I will not. No, you must give account. It's appointed unto man. Wants to die. And after that, judgment. 
Today I've come in here to see, I didn't know there was a, uh, 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 there were about four albums to be dedicated. But there are four of them. There is a book. You ask yourself, I don't know how many of you have heard about Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry, when they were served with notice of uh, unemployment, and their owner is like saying, the person who performs the best will stay. And so suddenly one of them started walking like this, walking with leg here, walking with leg here, walking with hand here, walking with hand here, all to multitask and make sure that he's the one selected to stay. So I have a situation where there's a young woman who is making sure, as I, I'm coming to understand now, that when a time comes, she will die empty. Everything given out. Her book on prayer was my compassion for a long time, a companion, my companion for a long time. I kept it somewhere, and I would read a page a day. Sometimes two pages a day. Because some books are not books you just read. You read meditatively. But for somebody to come to a point where you can begin to tell God, I don't want to die full. I want to die empty. Somebody must be the chairman of their life. That's where I'm going. The spirit of God inside each person who is born again. Majority of the time, he's a resident. Somebody else is the president. Somebody else is the chairman of that life. And it does happen that most of the time, people of God, we are the chairman of our lives. We can tolerate the spirit of God and say, Lord, you can stay in this room. When I need salvation or deliverance or need you to save me from Boko Haram, I can call you. But every issue of my life, I'm in charge. That is a recipe for a life of frustration. So it means that today, I can't take this role of chairman. I can't be chairman. There is an actual chairman that was mentioned initially. The Holy Spirit of God. He's a chairman. <laughs> Every other person comes. Or this afternoon. Is that if I must fulfill purpose. And begin to do the things I am supposed to do. Then I must let the Holy Ghost. Really. Displace me from my heart. It's not possible. You will struggle. Who? Him or you? Oh my God, a number of times our wills will clash with his will. But the Bible says when the will of God clash with the will, our master said, Abba, Father, Abba. Can do all things. You know what it means to say Abba Father? He was trying to tune God. Those very beautiful, I'd like uh, 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 expression. Salvation without the most understanding. We will understand. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's see. Trust.
experienced what the Bible refers to as beautiful ashes. It is a term that if you think about it, you had a difficult situation and God made it beautiful. That's how God made my life. Hallelujah. I'm a testimony. Praise the Lord. So he gave me his beauty for my ashes. Amen.
He gives us reasons to dance. He gives us reasons to smile. And he continues to give us reasons to laugh. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Oh, thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We'll sing one more song and I will go. Praise the Lord. This song is titled Grace. Woo! Woo! Oh, grace. Yeah. We need the grace of God. I have seen the grace of God. God's riches at Christ's expense, unmerited. The one that I did not deserve, he gave me his grace. His grace is forever sufficient. And that grace is available today. Oh, in whatever situation, his grace is abundant. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's by your way.
again come on with you thank you for your patience thank you for your time last of all tonight we'll be calling on someone very special for the official launching of both the book and the album and I will you know beseech our special dignitaries from our chairman to the reviewers and um, everyone that participated to please wait behind because we are having um, a media shoot with the news agency of Nigeria and some other media houses. So just spare us the next 10, 15 minutes and we'll be done for done for done sake. Thank you very much. So on that note, I'd like to welcome our chief launcher, Pastor Ben Amanambu to launch this. God bless you. Put your hands together for him one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I have enjoyed every moment I have spent here. Do I have uh, a witness in the house? Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's been an awesome time. And uh, honestly speaking, I want to say that it's a privilege that I have to um, moderate this session. And then uh, I'd like to invite some people to come and join me here. Uh, my wife, please come, come, come forward. Uh, is, is Pastor Ido there? I don't want to unveil this alone. Uh, is Pastor Ido there? Please come forward, come forward, please, come forward. And if I know call, please come forward, come forward, come forward. And then Engineer Mike, please come forward. Let's just unveil this because um, uh, this is a moment of action. Uh, moment, uh, there, you know, in my place, there is this proverb that uh, when it comes to money, <laughs> praise the Lord. But I, I want to believe that everybody here is capable. Amen. And I also want to believe that you are here because you love God. Right? We are here because we love God. It's not just because of an uh, answer. It's just because we love God. Praise the Lord. It's because we love him. And then um, one of the things that Jesus taught us is that one way to express our love for him is to do what? To give. To give. Uh, we are told initially when we came here that um, God gave the word and uh, great was the company of them that published it. And those of us who are here today, we have come to collaborate Publishing the work of God is a collaboration. It's not something that one individual does. And I want to believe that as you make your contributions here, the Lord will bless you immensely in Jesus' name. Can we just uh, unveil this? Let's unveil it. Yeah, just unveil it and then uh, hold, hold the books on your hand and then display it and then we're going to pray over it. And then uh, the people will begin to <laughs> in the middle, yeah, okay. Mm. Please display the books. Uh. I'd like us to pray together as we commit this great work into the hands of the Lord. The Lord is the one that gave the we, we had earlier, while our brother was uh, encouraging us, he 
He gave the talent, and then in addition, he gave the endowment. Can we just bless the Lord for that? Can we just bless the Lord? Father, we want to thank you for your grace that enabled your daughter to produce this. Father, we say we are grateful. Lord, we return that honor and glory to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we commit this work, this great work into your hands that you breathe upon us. Where our legs will not reach, these books will reach there. These albums will reach there. It will break barriers. It will cross over continents in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask, oh God, that because of your spirit that is upon this, uh, these productions, it will produce life. It will bring conviction in the name of Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, we dedicate them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Congratulations, my daughter. Bless you. Now, um, I'm not going to announce what I have here because uh, one of the things we know biblically is that um, God loves cheerful givers uh, and we don't want to cajole anyone because if your gift to God must be acceptable, then it must come from your heart. Amen? Amen. It must come from your heart. So as the Lord lays in your heart, whatever you have, we have been, we have been giving um, some um, slips. Please make your pledges and then some people here will also Give us some word of encouragement so that um, we will be able to give. The Lord bless you even as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor Dobu, you have something to say? Anyway, <laughs> you have said it all, but our desire, and I'm sure the desire of heaven, is that this good will go places. Amen. And as many as will run through the pages, we will find Jesus Christ. Amen. As many as will listen to these uh, songs, they will be lifted in the name of Jesus Christ. May I also join my brother to advise or oh, tell us if it is better to support a worthy cause. It's better to support something, not people who are going on aimless journey, but something that will be productive. Productive in the sense that um, it will affect lives. It will affect souls. It will affect souls to the kingdom. Such um, projects is worthy of being uh, supported. So I advise us, as many as are gifted, as many as are here, let them um, support this cause. And as we do so, the Lord will also support us also in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to add, I don't want to repeat what you have said. I just want to add that in my heart, I see the Lord here, you know, uh, presiding over the grace, the work he has done through his daughter. And uh, we are here to honor him for what he has done. So what we are doing, we are not actually uh, paying for the book. We are not trying to pay for the book. We are trying to give thanks to the Lord and to join in glorifying him and to give our token of love for what he has put down here to reach out to the continents where he intends that it will reach. Because I believe that as we have prayed, the Lord will carry the message through these um, materials to the places where he wants to reach out to. So as we join hands together to participate in this, I want to see that what you are giving is as unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I just want to encourage us to... Um, well, let me start by saying that I have appreciated every moment I spent here today. By the grace of God, we've come here now to do 
the financial launching of the book, so to speak. But more than this, I want to encourage us to please still let us still be in the attitude of prayer for our sister. Let it not just be that we have come and enjoyed the moment and spent some money or launched this book. But let, it, let, let us still be in, let us, let us still pray for her. That the grace of God in her life will continue to blossom. That the purpose of her gathering here today, in fact, today should not be the last of what God is going to do through her. Uh, you know, most often when we do this kind of dedication, immediately we leave there, the story ends with us. I want to encourage us, please let this story still continue to be in our lives. As we remember in, play, in prayers, that more, much better things will come through her unto the body of Christ in Jesus' name. So please let the, the pledge or whatever, if you have your cash or whatever you have, please let's have them before you go. The Lord will bless you even as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, MC. Praise the Lord. To bring this event to a wonderful, glorious end. Minister Tokwe? Okay. So to bring this glorious um, event to an end, Minister Tokwe will come and give um, a special vote of thanks. Please, could you celebrate him? He's been the one that... Um, manage this event and put everything together. So can we celebrate him one more time as he comes to give a brief word of thanks? Thank you, sir. Ten seconds. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, thank you so much. I didn't know I would be doing this, but I'm here all the same. To appreciate everyone that um, took out time to be here. Thank you for supporting us in your prayers. And uh, most importantly, thank you for availing yourself. I've said most importantly before, another most importantly, thank you for sharing your resources with us. We sincerely pray that God will replenish all that you have given out towards this cause in the name of Jesus. And as you return, the hand of the Lord will be with you. Things that were difficult for you before you came here, after now they become easy in the name of Jesus. For those of us that are also thinking of doing bigger things like this, the grace to do it is being released upon you now in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you in our subsequent events. Because this is just the kickoff. And God will help us all. Thank you. Can you celebrate our chief organizer today? Now, to bring this event to a final close, just a brief announcement. The books go for 1,000 naira. Then for the CDs, 500. And you can get them at the stand outside once you're walking out. Praise the Lord. Can we rise up on our, on our feet as we bring... Tonight's event will close. One more time, can we celebrate Jesus, who is the center of it all? Can we celebrate Jesus? Come on with you. Hallelujah. At this one in time, can we just thank him in 10 seconds? Say, Father, thank you for the success of this event. Lord, as we go back, everyone will go home safely as they came here safely. We'll have no return of bad news. It will be Johnny Mercy's for each and everyone that came here tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. To close this event, can we share the grace and fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, his goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Good night, and God bless you.